Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to attempt to make sense of one of the more confusing topics in woodworking and that is dust collection. The first question you may have is how do I know which type of dust collection I need? And to help answer that let me explain small versus large tool dust collection. One of the first things you're going to run into when researching dust collection is the term CFM, which stands for cubic feet per minute and it's the standard measure of how much air is pulled through a system when it's in operation. Small vacuums like this have relatively low CFM due to their small motors and small diameter hoses. This dust collector on the other hand has a much higher CFM due to a honking huge motor and impeller blade. It operates at a lower pressure and relies on that big motor to move a significantly higher volume of air through the system, which is the reason why I have this larger ductwork connected to it. And here's the thing, I can't use a hose like this on that big dust collector because it'll starve the system of the air that it needs and potentially cause damage to the motor. And the opposite is also true. I can't connect this four inch hose to this shop vac. Wait a minute, is that really true? Hmm, well that's a problem. Yeah, this is gonna work beautifully. Nothing that duct tape can't fix. Right, here we go. Huh. Well, I guess that does work. That's a lot more powerful than I thought it would be. Oh! Well, I guess if your shop vac hose goes missing, you always have this option. But seriously, if you hook this thing up to a planer, it would struggle to keep up with the chip load and you'd fill up this canister in like 30 seconds. Wait, is that really true? Hold on, I'll be right back. So ignoring all of that, if these things aren't really interchangeable, how do you know which type of dust collection you need? Well, that's easy. Your tools will tell you. Almost every powered woodworking tool will have some kind of dust collection feature like a dust port. The three most common sized ports are a smaller one and a something inch connection like this, which is common on things like random orbit sanders. Then there's a two to two and a half inch port, which you'll find on smaller stationary tools like this or this. And also a four inch port like this planer and most large stationary tools have. If your tools have one of the two smaller port sizes, then you should be good to go with a shop vac or a dust extractor. Those tools tend to produce fine dust and chips in small quantities that a shop vac can keep up with. But if your tool has one of the four inch ports or larger, then it really wants a dust collector hooked up to it. Bigger tools like this planer or joiner produce a lot of dust and chips really quickly and so you need something that can move that large volume of chips away from the tool. That way they don't create piles of dust inside them affecting their performance. All right, so now that you know the basic difference between these two types of dust collection, I'll dive into each one in more depth. First up, the small guys. Basically, they come in two flavors, shot vacs, which most people are familiar with and probably already have in their garage. And then there's the more specialized and bougie dust extractor. Shot vacs tend to be really basic. There's a motor sitting on a canister and some kind of hose. And they typically have two speeds, off and <coughs> Yeah, they're annoying but they can also be one of the cheapest form of dust collections. You can usually get a shop vac for between one and $200. With dust extractors, you're gonna get more features that are geared towards continuous dust collection. Most of them are gonna have better HEPA filtration than a shop vac's gonna have. And that's a big deal, especially when you're sanding and creating a lot of fine dust. And most also have tech that allows them to clean that filter while the vacuum is in use. This keeps the filter from clogging up fast and keeps the vacuum running as efficiently as possible for as long as possible. And they often have other features like tool actuated power. So you plug your tool into it and when the tool turns on, the vacuum also turns on. Super handy. And they can also have variable power control so that you can dial in the right amount of suction for the task. And finally, they tend to be a little quieter than their shop vac siblings. Not a ton quieter, but even five to 10 decibels can make a big difference when you're sanding for hours on end. But all these features are gonna come at a cost. Dust extractors tend to be double or even triple the cost of the best shop vac. So should you spend the extra money for a dust extractor over a shop vac? And in my opinion, the only real feature that you get with a dust extractor that's a game changer is the improved air filtration. But I do have an upgrade to show you for your shop vac that'll improve its efficiency and its filtration. Check this out. This is a dust collection cart and it basically takes any shop vac and turns it into a mini two-stage dust collector. By adding a cyclone like this, I can separate out the dust and debris before it makes it into the vacuum which is really important because inside the vacuum is where the filter is. And if you can keep all of that material from clogging up the filter, you're gonna keep the vacuum running as efficiently as it can for as long as it can. 
And it's also much easier to see when you need to empty this bucket and clear away the debris. There are other separators out there that'll go over a bucket like this, but the Cyclone style does the best at separating out the fine dust and debris, and that's the style that I would recommend. And also, I do have plans available for this dust collection cart. This version works with a smaller style shot vac, but I do have another version that works with a larger shot vac, and I'll have links to those plans down in the description below. Now let's talk about the large dust collectors. Just like the small guys, they come in a couple of different styles. The first kind is the bag or canister style dust collector. These tend to be between about a one and a one and a half horsepower motor and are on the lower end of CFM for dust collectors. They work by sucking air through an impeller and around a small separator where the dust and debris falls into a bag and the air passes up through a filter on top. And if your tools are located within, say, 20 feet of the machine, you shouldn't have any performance issues. One of the things I would definitely recommend is upgrading to the canister style filter over the bag filter. They're rated to filter out much more of that really fine dust. And a step up in both power and filtration is the Cyclone Dust Collector. This model that I have has a three horsepower motor and this large funnel. It also has variable control out of the power that it delivers based on the resistance that it feels from the source. This style dust collector does the best job at filtering out both the chips and the fine dust and it can be located a pretty long way from your tools. But that increase in power and efficiency does come at a pretty steep cost. Between buying a machine like this and buying all of the ductwork to go with it, you're looking at 2,500 to 3,000 bucks. So do you need to make that kind of investment in this kind of machine? In my opinion, that just depends on your shop layout and how much you want to increase the efficiency of your dust collection. As I mentioned earlier, the one and a half horsepower machine worked just fine for me when I was in a two car garage. But when I moved from that two car garage to my new shop, my shop became very narrow and long. My old jet dust collector just couldn't deal with that. So if you're in a smaller shop or you can put your dust collector in a more central location, you can save a bunch of money here by going with one of these smaller dust collectors. Now let's switch gears and talk about air quality. Sometimes as woodworkers, we get hyper-focused on the sawdust that gathers around our tools and on the floor. But the reality is, while this stuff might be annoying to look at, it's not the stuff that's gonna cause you harm. The real danger is in the air. It's the microscopic particles that are floating around as you're working that are gonna get sucked into your face hole and bury themselves in your lungs. That's where an air filtration system comes in and it's one of the key elements to a good dust collection strategy. You can leave them running in the background generally two to eight hours, depending on how much cutting you've done in the shop that day. So these units aren't cheap. If you go with the one that I have from Powermatic back here that looks like a big fan, or you go with the units that look more like a big box with a filter stuck on the front, they're all gonna cost you several hundred dollars. But of all the things we've talked about, I think this is definitely one of the tools that you can afford to be patient on. Because there is one other way that you can keep yourself from breathing in all that fine dust, and that is to get yourself a face mask like this. I keep two different style masks around the shop, and this style is from a company called RZ. I find them to be the most comfortable and the most cool looking. But I also have this style mask from 3M. Now this mask is gonna cost you a little bit more money in the end, after you buy the mask and the replaceable cartridges. But I do find that this style mask fits a little bit better with this rubber face thing, doesn't allow as much to enter. And so I usually wear this mask when I'm spraying finish. The last thing I'll mention here is no matter which brand you choose, go ahead and get yourself a good mask that is rated for fine dust. You don't need to get a mask that's rated N95 unless you're worried about your lumber giving you a virus. All right, so now you have a better idea of which type of dust collector is right for your shop. The last part of this strategy is figuring out how we're gonna connect all this stuff together. One way is to use flex hose like this. The pros of using flex hose is that it's the cheaper of the options that you have, and it's also more versatile because you can put a connector on the end of it like this and just transfer it from tool to tool as you use it, kind of like a quick connect system. The biggest con of flex hose is that it's got all of these ribs along the inside surface of the hose, which theoretically can affect your CFM because each one of those little ridges is gonna cause resistance in the airflow. And the other con is that these things are kind of floppy and they end up just laying on the floor becoming a tripping hazard. And then that leads to the other option, which is to install a rigid duct system. 
The pros of this style system are that they have a smooth inner wall, which is going to maximize your CFM. You can also more easily build dedicated runs of ducting to each tool and fasten them to walls, beams, or the ceiling. And the only real con to this method is cost, which can honestly vary widely depending on the number of feet of ductwork that you run and the type of material that you choose to use. The easiest and most cost effective way to start is to use PVC pipe to make your runs. PVC pipe is readily available at any big box home store and it's also easy to cut to length. You can actually just use the saws right in your shop. And it's easy to find perfectly fitting elbows wise and other connectors that can be glued together to make perfectly airtight connections. And while all that sounds great, there are a couple of things that you need to think about if you're going to go with PVC. The first is size. Most big box stores are only going to carry PVC pipe up to four inches in diameter. The other consideration is safety, mainly static electricity buildup. If you've ever used PVC for dust collection, you've probably casually brushed by your ductwork and gotten a surprisingly strong shock from it. The theory here is that this might cause an arc or a spark, which could ignite the dust inside of the collector, sending everything up in flames. I used PVC pipe for my dust collection system for about four years, and while I experienced static shock many times, I never experienced anything like sparks or embers or fire of any kind. And I've also never heard from another woodworker who's experienced a shop fire that could be directly contributed to this kind of thing happening. How likely is that to happen? I don't know. So what I would advise to you is do your own research on using PVC ductwork for your dust collection in your own shop and make your own decisions based on what you feel comfortable doing. And if you want to avoid PVC, the other option that you have is metal ductwork. As you can hopefully see behind me, I use metal ductwork in my dust collection system. Now, this is a little bit harder to come by and a little bit more expensive, but if you just search for building supply stores or Google the internet will tell you where to get it. I got mine from kincraft.com. It comes flat packed. You have to roll it together and it's got a seam where everything snaps in and locks together, hence the term snap lock pipe. The main benefits to using this as a ducting system is size. This is a six inch pipe, which is what my main trunk line is. And that's what works best with my dust collection system. And then the other thing you don't have to worry about is that static buildup. It's pretty easy to ground this entire system because from the dust collection all the way to the tool, everything is made out of metal. So being able to ground the system and dissipate that shock before it even builds up to give you a static shock is no problem whatsoever. The way I have my shop set up is that I've got a main six inch trunk line made from snap lock ductwork. And off of that, I've got small drops of four inch flexos to each one of my big tools. This is just enough flexos so that I have some ability to move the tool around and still remain connected to the system. The final thing that you need to consider whether you're using flex hose or solid duct work is how you're gonna regulate the airflow throughout the system. This is a plastic blast gate and it's crap and a complete waste of money. They don't get good seals and dust tends to collect up in these corners, preventing you from being able to even close it all the way. You can see I can't get this one closed anymore. I would not waste a single dime on these. And this is a metal blast gate. And I'd say this is probably the Goldilocks of the bunch. It's a lot more sturdy than the plastic ones. It also creates a better seal because you've got this knob to tighten it down in place and it doesn't get jammed up nearly as easily. In my opinion, this is where you should invest your money. But there is another option. This is an automatic blast gate. It connects to the tool's power cord and detects when the tool's been turned on and automatically opens the gate while closing off all other open gates. Are these expensive? Yep. Is it a complete luxury item? Yep. Am I happy that I never have to worry about forgetting to open the blast gate, throwing sawdust all over my shop again? Yep. Well, that's it. That's everything that I know about dust collection. And hopefully now you have enough information to go off and start building out your own dust collection strategy. If you do have any other questions, go ahead and leave those down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those for you. And please also make sure that you check out these other videos that I have lined up here for tips and tricks on organizing your workspace. And until next time, guys, have fun in the shop.